What is up, everybody? It's been a while since I've done a video. This is going to be on my... Sorry, there's neighbor. Uh, he's I think he's mowing right now. But I have a few minutes right now, so I'm going to make this video anyway. This is on my 250, my 2017 F250. And I had a BDS 2-inch leveling kit on it before. That came with a spacer. The Their tuned 2.0 Fox shocks. And a track bar relocation bracket and so what I decided to do is go a little bit better I, I was starting to not really not like the ride the ride was okay shocks were getting really spongy um, I can almost push them down or kind of according them in between my hands uh, I had to put some weight on it but you know for the most part they were losing a little bit of their pizzazz so anyway that's a great kit, kind of set it, forget it, if you're not doing any real crazy towing. It's good for a grocery getter type of thing. You want to put stuff in there every once in a while, um, but not, not when you're towing weights like that. So it's just, you know, I needed something that was going to accommodate, but also be smooth when I am empty. So what I did is I went with an Icon 2.5 inch spring. They, now, they do have a progressive rate instead of a linear rate, whatever you want to call those different rates. Uh, like, I, the, um, sorry, Icon uses a progressive rate spring, whereas like a Carly kit would use a linear rate spring, meaning it's like the same, the same amount of resistance the whole time, whereas the Icon progressive rate is a little softer in the first squish, and then then you get a little bit, and then you can hit the big stuff after that. And that's very similar to if you were to have a tender spring, a dual rate spring setup, very similar to what I have on my my uh, Razor. And when I got the iBot kit, it comes with a bigger tender spring, or longer one, I should say, because the stock one's already, already smashed up. It doesn't really do anything. And so you get the, you know some of that chop and everything, it soaks it up, and then when you want to hit the big stuff, the whoops and everything. It handles it, but this is not was not my intention to get this vehicle to race the Baja, not even to really take it on uh, on off road. My main purpose of getting this kit was to get a little bit more plush ride out of it. Uh, it's, ditch the the stock springs, the stock linear springs, get something that's dual rate, um, and also be able to accommodate when I'm towing. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and, and dive right into it. It was kind of a kind of a um, pain in the butt to get this in by myself, but I went ahead and made it work. So let's go ahead and get over, or I'm sorry, the suspension setup. So here we go. These are my Icon Springs, and as you can see down in there, barely see it, but I went ahead and I forget the website. I wanna say it was uh, bolts, all bolts or something. I could not find the stock size bolt that held on my, my my lower spring perch down there and the BDS kit came like I said with the spacer and they had a 100 millimeter long 14 by 2 the 2 meaning the thread pitch and 10.9 grade bolt so I'm, a, I'm figuring okay minus 2 inches in millimeters that was about 50 so I went ahead with a 50 millimeter same thread pitch by two. It has a very small, short shank on it, or shoulder, whatever you want to call that, that goes through that spring seat. And I actually, I, I ran it down with my hand and it didn't bottom out in the knuckle down there. So that's what I went with. It's flanged as well, 10.9 strength, worked out great. And if, I don't know if you can see down there, I kind of have some pen, I don't know if you can see down in there, but anyway, I have some paint pen marks to see if that's gonna back out. But anyway, uh, I torqued it down to spec which I believe was 95 foot pounds, and it's working out great so far. I've had this kit on a week, I've dri driven it to work. It is working great. So the springs, I'm really loving them. And with the Icon spring kit, they don't suggest or even recommend a brake cable extension kit. Now with this, we're ready, and if you do this yourself, you're gonna see when your axles drop down, when you don't, when you know, what you have, even when you have your shocks on, at full droop, this thing, this guy's, He's stressing out a little bit. So I think I'm gonna do a uh, brake line extension here pretty soon. This is all really kind of dependent and tentative 
and I'll get to that in a second. But this guy, really great. Icon track bar. I went ahead and put my stock track bar back on, and I believe it's at 129 foot-pounds or somewhere around there. I went ahead and cranked all those bolts down. There's five of them. Actually, there's two screws, and then there's three nuts underneath. And let me lay down. Sorry. Ooh. Let me lay down, and I'll show you. Right up in there, there's three nuts. Sorry, it's focused on my finger, but you can see those three nuts up there. And there's like this little bracket with three screws that come through it and goes through your subframe right there. Easy to do. And I cranked everything down. My track bar is kind of leaned over right now and you can see that is kind of leaned against the bracket, but I try to turn it, it is really tough to turn. So anyway, pre-length, it's already adjusted from icon for the 2.5 inch kit. You don't have to do anything. You just bolt it up. This guy takes 405 foot pounds. My suggestion is like on one of my older videos, get yourself a three quarter inch breaker bar, put a, I want to say it's a 30 millimeter, 29, something like that, probably a 30 millimeter on there. And you come from this side. Well, the other side, I would say the other side where the nut is and pull up with a cheater bar because my torque let's get back to me hey uh my torque wrench goes to 300 foot pounds and i got a click on that thing and i wasn't really giving it too much so what i did is i just like i said you stand there easiest way to do is to stand because if you try to hang on it it's just your body weight but if you stand there and pull up on it now you can use your legs and everything my suggestion is your legs not your back and get that all done up um so anyway under get back to the hardware here and everything underneath everything looks great got my through shaft steering stabilizer that thing is a lifesaver um i believe i put those little spacers on for my bump stops upside down but i don't really think it matters um not gonna lie i didn't really read the directions on that one and i might get a I might get a a sway bar drop bracket from carly but we'll see here in a minute um the alignment shop did have to adjust my steering wheel because it was slightly off. Even going coming from a two inch puck to a two and a half inch kit, my steering wheel was a little off. So I went ahead and that had adjusted. So everything buttoned up nice up here. And let's head over to the shocks now. This is kind of the main event. The shocks are great. And these are the Fox Factory Race Series. Doesn't really say it on here. And the reason why. I kind of like these two because they do have the performance elite shocks that are all aluminum body and it is a extrusion molded however you want to say it calf just like all their 2.0s aluminum body and they kind of just like knurl the end or somehow do the end and anyway it seals up the top this has an aluminum top cap steel body aluminum bottom cap and it is just insanely robust this does have less heating uh, capabilities are, are what I mean is uh, heat dissipation abilities because it is a steel body, but it is a, a superior, obviously, material compared to aluminum. And the cool thing about the Shock Factory Race Series with adjusters, you can get with or without. Performance Elite, they all come with adjusters, but this is a dual rate compression adjuster on there. Now, what I had to do is because originally with these shocks, the reservoir, this came out like this, and I believe it. this was down. It was down at like the uh, 180 position instead of the 90. 180, and the hose kind of dipped down, and this on the reservoir itself, this was also clocked at more of like an up and down vertical kind of parallel with the uh, reservoir itself. Um, or maybe it was the other route. I'm sorry. I, I forget how it was. But anyway, essentially, they would have you mount the reservoir like this. This is according to Fox Instructions. You guys can go on the website and check it out. Uh, I was worried about running my stock rims and tires. And you can see the stock rims rubbing on the reservoir. So I had this wonderful company. Yes, we're just going to finally sh give a shout out to them. AccuTune. They went ahead and clocked everything for me. So I can put it like that. And it's just kind of a custom setup. Uh, I haven't really seen any other vehicle like this because most of the Carly kits, you see that little bracket that goes up here on your isolator and, uh, and then you get the little bracket up on top. So, you know, went ahead and did this. And 
the cool thing about this is and now I have clearance. It is unique. It's almost kind of hidden. So if people were looking at it like, oh, that's a kind of a stock truck. Wait a minute, what is that? And it's not so flashy, not so blingy. There's no, obviously on the shock tube itself, the shock body, there's no advertisements and all this stuff. The only thing we're seeing here is a little Fox logo right there. And of course, the main dudes, AccuTune. Definitely go with them. I'm running everything in the fully open position right now. Let's bring you over to the other side of the vehicle so we can check out both sides and see how close I had to get, you know, the the angle of these reservoirs. What I did is I ended up cutting my liner. I just put a piece of masking tape, kind of followed it along where I wanted it to go. And then I just used my Dremel. And then I took a box cutter and got the burrs off of it and everything, give it a nice little roundy edge to it so you're not gonna get up in there and if you're doing something, maybe end up catching your uh, knuckles on it or something and filleting yourself open. So, this is both sides here. Again, very, very nice shocks. This kit was very easy to install, but like I was getting to with AccuTune and running these in full open, that's what they suggest. And that's what I'm doing. Now I did mess around with the adjusters a little bit. The low speed, they say is more for like body roll and stuff like that. Obviously low speed compression, anything that's very slow. And then the high speed compression is obviously everything for your big bumps, your jolts and stuff like that. But I kind of messed with my low speed and it made every, I could feel every pebble in the road. It was just really weird. And I only had it up two clicks, maybe three. So I pulled everything back out, opened up these valves completely. And this truck, I'm telling you, it's a very weird feeling. I'm not sure how to describe it, but when you come from a stock suspension setup, very similar to what I had, the BDS suspension, only thing I had different on that were the shocks. The shocks made a difference, yes. Um, I was able to go off curbs and stuff, and, and the truck was somewhat compliant. This is different. This setup is is a different setup, and I, and I can't really describe it because on the freeway, sometimes it feels like you're just floating. The rear end has also softened up. I'm running my bags at zero because I do have um, the bump stops inside my, my airbags, my airlift airbags. Uh, long, for the longest time, I was running them at 5 PSI, and the people are saying, oh, you're going to ruin your airbag. But right on Airlift's website, and this is what, three years later, I finally decided, oh shoot, I should have been running these at zero. It's a, it's just so much a so much better ride. So if anybody, if you have those Jones bump stops, whatever, the bump stops inside your airbags, run them at zero, pull your Schrader if you want to. I might even do that. Uh, just yank the valve right out of, because I, I do have the redundancy, I do have the pump, and I have the Schrader poking out the back just in case, you know, the pump fails and you need, you need to bump up your backs. But anyway, getting off topic here, the rear end is so much, it's so much softer. It's just, it's really weird to describe, really hard to describe, but it's a weird feeling because everything's soft, but at the same time, when you hit a dip, it soaks it up. So you got the best of both worlds. You got this nice smooth ride, just gliding over all the small choppy stuff. And then you hit a dip and it just handles everything. And that's the cool thing about these dual dual rate springs and the dual speed compression adjusters. Now, like I said, I only I have everything open right now. I was messing around a little bit, and on the fronts, I, I opened those up. I'm sorry, I closed them one click. So I went ahead and did one click on the front adjusters on the big one on the high speed, and it does seem to handle a little bit better. So you would think it's kind of counterintuitive. You think you would use your low speed compression adjusters to handle low speed stuff but it seems like my high speed adjusters i don't know i'm i this is my first time having this stuff so i'm playing around but one click on the front on the high speed um, from full open seems to be the best so far and i'm going to go ahead and mess around the back as well because i do notice in some of the bigger bumps it does want to bottom out and hit those bump stops and back because there's like no travel inside those airbags obviously and then the front you can see these uh the bump stop relocation things or the extenders kind of weird because bds had zero bump stop relocation brackets and i got a little more up travel on it so i might play around a little bit to see what my distances are maybe have a custom extension made for my my bump stops and instead of having that that longer one that icon recommends maybe i'll chop a half an inch off of there or something like that i don't know we'll we'll, we'll see but very nice kit i'm i'm so jazzed i i, I should have done this long time ago uh, did all myself like i said sorry i probably skipped on you a little bit but i did it all myself i used these i bought these daytona jacks from harbor freight they're 12 ton jacks 
It's about 150 bucks. Really not bad at all. And they go all the way to 30 inches tall. And the one thing I like about that is you can jack your truck up high enough to where you can drop your axle low enough. Now, once you take your tires off, obviously, your axle's gonna come down lower because, well, you don't have a tire on there. But I just wanted to be sure that I had enough room to drop my axle down. And also, I had my truck backed up in there. Yes, don't don't even look at that, guys. So I had my truck backed up in there. Yeah, I know it's a mess. And uh, this little lip right here, this little lip, I had my front end hanging off right here. And it just gave me a little bit more of that ground clearance. And I also went ahead, sorry, switching back and forth. I also went ahead and put my quad in the back of the truck just for that added weight in the back. So I wasn't, something, nothing wasn't falling on me. It took a lot of finagling to get everything together by myself, uh, going to side to side to side, putting the spring in, trying to jack it up, and uh, did make it work though, you know, and um, use a little bit of common sense, which I know it's lacking a lot nowadays, but use a little common sense and you can get everything jacked up. And to be honest with you, I really didn't pay attention to too many instructions because it's very self-explanatory and how this stuff comes apart and goes together. You just have to have the concept in your head already do it and make sure you're just conscious of every every step of the way uh, you don't want to get hurt and you don't want to damage anything but so like i was telling you guys i'm it's tentative on what i'm going to do with this truck and unfortunately yes i just put this whole kit on spent a lot of money on it and i wanted to get some new rims and we kind of made make my truck finally a little fancy and everything but that being said third time on my upper oil pan leak yep I've had two upper oil pan leaks so far, both repaired at the dealer. I have another month and a half or so before my five year warranty runs out uh, because it's covered under the engine warranty and at 100,000 miles and I'm at like 64,000 miles. So I'm covered and I think it'd be covered anyway because of this is the third occurrence uh, for the same exact problem and I'm just kind of, I'm at this crossroads right now, do I take legal action? Or do I get it fixed and try to go about my day? I'm going to get some advice. I might, might. I have a couple few friends that have passed the bar. And we'll see if they have any uh, lawyer buddies that can give me some advice. I'm not trying to screw anyone over here and trying to stick it to Ford. But I just don't want to get it fixed again and have it fail again. And what if it's on my own dime to fix it? It's just pain in the butt right now. Um kind of discouraging kind of take the wind out of my sails because I love this truck I really do love my truck but unfortunately I do have another leak now I would I would show you it's just really hard to see especially because it's dark it's kind of a it's a gloomy day and I'd have to get the flashlight out and stuff like that and it's 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 really hard to tell the average person go oh just you know no you could tell up there and because I've been through it three times already um but anyway with that being said I I, I we'll we'll see what happens when what I do with this truck uh, but if anybody's going to be doing this, and yes, there's plenty of installation, removal and installation videos on this these type of kits, I suggest checking those things out. Um, I know, uh, uh, sorry, I'm drawing blanks, but just do a search on your YouTube and you'll be able to find out how to properly install this stuff. But it's not that hard. You can do it yourself. I did it myself real easy. Uh, one thing I do suggest, sorry, one thing I didn't do myself, um, and I actually had my buddy come over and help me just a little bit was I'm gonna go right underneath the truck again and we're gonna come back to the track bar and that ball joint the stock one that thing was I mean it was jammed in there now my little puller you know you got the little hooky deal things and then you got the screw that comes up and it's supposed to push your ball joint right out well uh, it was it was about to break and I felt like I was gonna break the tool itself and I have some crescent wrench that are damn near the size of my arm I mean it came from my father-in-law he was a trucker so I have these massive crescent wrenches it wasn't budging so my buddy came over put a torch to it we put some pressure on the tool popped right out um, but, uh, but like I said it, it's very doable to do it yourself and uh, I think a lot of people do do that and they just don't post any videos but um, like I said there's my upper oil pan but it's you can't tell it's actually in the rear and it's it's back it's back in there and uh, it is leaking from the upper but anyway guys if you want a a really nice kit either icon carly i think they're both going to do the job for you and uh it's really up to you what you want to do 
Um, my suggestion is, you know, look at my video. Obviously, I'm giving you real world kind of seat of the pants experience, and I love I love the the ride of the truck right now. Is Carly going to be more harsh? I, I don't really know. I don't have a Carly kit, and I don't know anyone that does have a Carly kit. But I'm assuming they're just they're going to be just as good. Um, Carly kit does allow for more droop, so be aware of that. Um, and I think that's why they actually, with their kits, they suggest doing the sway bar drop brackets and or their end links. And uh, their kits do come with a brake extension because I think their their kits do droop a little more. So you get a little more down travel, which is a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. Um, but I'm not bashing on either brand. I just uh, I went ahead and went with this kit because I felt like I wanted that little bit softer ride on the road. I'm not looking to off-road. Carly, I, I think it's more geared for those off-road folks. And I'm just only off-road I do in this truck is when we're heading to out to the desert and we're taking Wheeler out to our spot. But that's pretty much it. So there's there's a bunch of specialty tools. Sorry, I'm stuttering. Uh, but look those up. Look at the videos. You'll see what tools you need. The instructions come with, uh, you know, what the tools that are required and everything. But um, yeah, this, uh, I'm going to get the, it's, this truck sits so nice now. Even with these a little oversized, these are almost uh, 35 inch tires. I think they're like 34.8 whatever inch tires because they're two. What are they? What are these guys? Um, these are 295 70 18s. So gives you that little bit of width to them and a little bit more height. Um, I love them. They ride great. I'm, I have them at 55 pounds right now. Doing good. So I just wanted to give that update. I know it's been a long time, so this video is kind of long, but very, very nice looking. I just love looking at this wheel well now and looking at how clean that kit is. Let's come around to the other side. How clean that is. Oh, and let's go check out the backs because I'm gonna show you what the backs look like actually. And they're clocked a little bit differently where they have their reservoirs. Now, as you can see, this one is clocked a certain way because it has to clear all that jazz. And then if you look over to the passenger side, you can see the reservoir right there and how that's clocked. So they're slight, clocked slightly differently. Um, and that's just because of where they are mounted. And it tells you which what which side goes on which. And like I said, this the rear, God, the rear, it really will surprise you. <laughs> Sorry really will surprise you how much shocks in the rear can make that much of a difference on the right. God damn, I hit my mirror. <laughs> um, but if you have airbags, only so much you can do. Eventually, I do, we'll, we'll do some type of external mount airbag that goes on the side of the the frame. And then um, maybe like a Daystar cup or I'm going to do something if I do keep this truck. If I do keep this truck and everything works out, um, I'm going to do Deavers in the back and we're going to do maybe the long travel airbags from Carly. We'll see. And that's going to just give you the best of the best right there. Towing capacity, everything so you can level out your load uh, when you're towing. <laughs> towing big. And unloaded, you'll be able to have that smooth ride. But like I said, guys, it rides great. I suggest it. Definitely recommend everything on this truck. You don't have to go so crazy with the shocks, but like I said, get something that's adjustable. Even if you go the 2.0s, get something that's adjustable. When you hook up your load, you're going to crank those adjusters, and that's going to give you all that compliant ride, and you're not swaying and kind of getting, uh, like, trying basically white knuckling it because when my, my old shocks were getting kind of, you know, wore out, it makes for a really stressful ride and you want that ride back. You know, when this thing was stock and or when I first put those other foxes on and I tow, it just towed so straight, so nice. Everything was so smooth. And over time, everything wears out and and that's mainly your shocks. And I could have thrown new shocks on the BDS kit, but I wanted to just, I figured I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it big. I'm going to go crazy. But... One other thing, one last thing before we make this video two hours long. These shocks, I did get confirmation from Fox. These part numbers right here. Because, remember, in 2020, Ford decided to change the height of the vehicle. They lowered everything. They lowered the front by one inch and the rear by one and a half inches. 
and I think the reason was is there was a lot of consumers that were getting these trucks and they're maybe a little older guys or something like that and they just want to climb into a monster truck all the time so they wanted it a little bit lower kind of like the earlier models from 11 to 16 they were lower right and i think even even everything before that 17 they decided to do this like suspension body lift thing whatever it was but it was definitely it's definitely a higher stock vehicle so 2020 they went back to the what they had before a little bit lower so you'd have to go three and a half inches on the new truck obviously to equal two and a half inch and Fox did confirm that these shocks will fit everything from, uh, I think it's a two inch to a three and a half inch lift. And if I do end up going, going to the Lemon Law and I do take legal action on this and I have to lose my baby, I'll get into a newer vehicle. Obviously, we'll get a 2022. Hopefully, Ford will accommodate me because I don't really want to spend too much more money. This thing's almost paid off. I don't want to get into this another big old payment. Um, but it's I didn't ask for this leak to happen three times either. Uh, these shocks are going to go on the new truck. I'm going to take them off this truck because I know Ford's not going to give me all this money I put into it. They're not going to go, oh, you have a cold air intake. You got these side steps. You got the airbag. Blah, blah, blah. They're not going to do that. They're just going to basically, I think, according to Lemon Law, they just pay you for what you bought the vehicle for. Um, unless they make something work for me, but I'm taking the suspension off for sure. At least the shocks. Obviously, I can't take the springs off now. Um, I don't want to revert everything back to stock. That's a lot of work for me. It's not worth it. I'll just go ahead and buy a Carly kit because Carly does have a three and a half inch lift kit for this, uh, the 2022, 20 and above. Um, and there's the only two companies I would really go with the ready lift and all that stuff and pro comp and all that stuff. Everybody knows fab tech. I don't know all those majorly crazy commercialized, you know, lift kits do not go with them. And the only reason why I say that is because if you look at the people that actually love their rides, they're going to recommend these two companies and it's going to be Icon or it's going to be Carly for these solid axle trucks. And this is hands down going to be the best of the best. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably end up going Carly because I don't think Icon makes a three and a half inch kit. I think it goes two and a half and then four and a half, but Carly does do a three and a half inch lift kit. So like I said, if I do have to go with the newer truck, these shocks are coming with me. I'll make a video, an updated video on what's going on with this truck, but um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I know it was a really long video, and I didn't really say uh, too many details on stuff, but it's just been a long time since I made a video, and I rarely get time. The kids are at the dentist right now and stuff with, with mom, so yeah, I got a little bit of time to myself. Uh, any questions on anything, torques or whatever, or how I did certain things that would really help you guys out, just just shoot, it, shoot a, a question in the comments uh, section, and I'll... Uh, I'll answer to the best of my ability. I can kind of point at things and, and just tell you what I do. I don't like to do like crazy instructional videos when I'm working because I just, I don't have the time when I, when I start doing something, I just have my mind to it. I don't have in the back of my mind, I'm going like, Oh, I have to move the camera around. I have to get this shot. I'm just trying to get the job done because time is very, very, very precious to me. And especially anybody that's got kids, you know what I'm talking about. Time is of the essence. So anyway, any questions guys, like I said, Shoot a question in the comment section. Um, like the video if you want. I'm not sitting here looking for subscribers and stuff and looking to get paid by YouTube, so I don't really care if you like or don't like the video. Um, this is more of an, uh, an informative, educational video for people that are thinking about going to a lift like this uh, and kind of what, what, what to expect out of it. You know, the different shocks, uh, like I said, from the 2.0 to these and just my, my personal experience. So, all right, guys. Sorry for making this super long, but uh, thanks for watching and uh, catch you on the next one. Later.